barbecue? Well, of course you do, unless you're some kind of weirdo or wasn't raised right. So if you want to get some of the best barbecue around, check out P3 Barbecue. Our buddy David Estes does it up right. He'll be glad to cater to your next event or just send you some of his award-winning sauce right there to your own doorstep. Go over and check them out on the Facebooks at facebook.com slash P3 Barbecue or give old David a call at 901-679-3452 and tell him Whitey Jenkins sent you. Hey guys, this is Wolfie D from PG-13. Check out my podcast, Live and in Color with Wolfie D, every Monday at noon. We're talking Memphis, we're talking ECW, WCW, WWF, everywhere that I've been. We even have some great guests, some Hall of Famers on the show with us. Every Monday at noon, Live and in Color with Wolfie D. Jenkins here, and welcome to another episode of the Whitey Jenkins Show. We got a big show planned for you today, as we got a very special guest. I'm going to bring him on here. We ain't going to waste no time. We're just going to get right down to business, as we got Terrell Moore. You may know him better as Dirty. How you doing, Dirty? I don't know pretty good. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, yeah, I'm doing good, man. How you doing yourself? Ah, you know, I'm doing all right, I reckon. We here, getting by. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. So what you been up to? Uh, nothing, just trying to get everything in order, you know, by my house. I lost my house to a house fire December 19th, and I've been trying to do a lot of stuff, trying to get it back, you know, you know, dealing with the insurance, and then, you know, that's a pain in the butt. Been dealing with them for almost a month, trying to get everything situated with that, and Stuff like that, and Brian, you know, because I pretty much lost everything, and and so I'm just steady trying to get stuff back like that. But you know, I can't complain. I'm I'm still here. Well, man, I tell you what, I mean, you've uh, you've taken it all very well, because I mean, like I said, you lost dang near everything. Uh, important thing is, I mean, you, you you know, you're safe and your family is safe, but. It's still, you know, losing it, losing everything, and then, like you say, all the stuff that goes along with it, all the headaches of trying to deal with everything. But you know, one thing about it, I mean, you know, you're the promoter of OWO wrestling over there, and over mm -hmm. the years, you and Tony Dabs and a lot of people have done a lot of good things for a lot of folks that's been through hard times like this. And now, uh, Tony and a bunch of us is getting a chance to return the favor and do the same for you. And so there's going to be a big benefit show coming up February the 5th. That's a Saturday. And tell us a little bit about that. Where's that going to be and what details you do know? Well, uh, like I said, I mean, first of all, let me back up just a little bit and say that, uh, you know, I'm, you know, uh, I appreciate everybody, you know, Tony, and you know, Neil, Neil, uh, APW, I can't you know, leave them out. I forgot to say they I appreciate So, I can't go. You know, I've been doing this. I've been doing Man, you, we can't hear anything. You sound like a robot. We ain't heard any. We ain't been able to hear anything you say in there. Can you hear me now? I, I'm there we go. A bit of service there. Yeah, yeah I'm, I, it's service. But anyway, like I was saying, uh, everybody reached out about doing the benefit, and so we kind of got everything, you know, finalized now, and it'd be February field. Uh, you know, at uh, Smith or the Smith or Gymnasium. And, you know, 7, seven o'clock, I seen Tony has got – Tony and uh, along with, you know, EPW got a good car so far. And we got people like, of course, yourself and some of the violent gentlemen will be there. And got uh, – we got Bone Crusher will be there, Easy Rodden, Hollywood Jimmy, uh, 
We got Brody Hogg, uh, David Andrews, uh, Chris Styles. Uh, like, you know, it's gonna be a pretty good, you know, pretty good car, you know. Say so, you know. I'm just, you know, I'm behind the scenes. You know, first time I ever, I'm really not actually involved in dealing with none of that stuff. I'm just kind of, in, I kind of get informed what's going on, and so it's kind of, kind of different for me because I guess you know I tell people I say I ain't, you know. Even though I have been helping a little bit, but I ain't, I ain't running a benefit for myself, you know. So it's kind of right, kind of different from this aspect. You no, know, no, no. Most benefits always have a hand, and you know where they finding people or getting the, you know, getting the, you know, you know. It's it's kind of weird to me because I'm used to, you know, for you know at least for the last ten years, like I was having my hand in the show. So you know, yeah. I, I just I'm just sitting back enjoying the ride. I guess. Well, I mean, you know, a lot of people, a lot of people knock wrestling and wrestlers and talk about how, you know, it's an ugly business and, and it can be, I mean, let's be honest, it, it can be, but I've always been impressed in these times when things happen and, 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 you know, somebody in the business needs help in these situations, how everybody does come together and are happy to donate their time and, and come you know, try to do what they can to raise money and help folks out. And uh, I'm glad to see this is another situation where, I, I mean, every day there's people, you know, getting added to the card. And, you know, EPW is not going to run a show that night so their wrestlers can come down there and participate. So it's it's good to see. And, you know, like I say, you've been on the other end of this, you know, many times over the years, you know, helping out. And so – how does it make you feel to, to see that everybody coming together? Uh, you know, it, it's such a rough time for you. Man, it makes it makes me feel good. And that, you know, this is what I always, you know, this was I always like. You know, you know, everybody kind of knocks wrestling. You know, gives a bad name, but we, you know, me personally, and like I said, I, I really ain't tallied it up until like the other day. I was just sitting around not doing that. But me personally, I have have ran nine. You know, O W O has ran nine benefits in ten years, and so. And most of and most of them have been fellow wrestlers and stuff like that, and so it kind of make you you know, you know make you feel good and stuff. And so like I mean I, I appreciate everybody uh you know and their support you know even people that you know as are you know that had reached out to me you know even you know I ain't you know not selling no money wise but even the people that said man I hope everything gets better I hope that you know I'm you know I'm not one to you know I got the house myself you know we. You know, I got my clothes myself. I bought it myself, so I don't really expect people to help me. And some people, you know, went out of the way and helped me. And people continue, like, you know, you'd be surprised, like, every day, like, somebody's, you know, doing this for me and doing that for me. You know, I go go here, I go to the gas station. People, like, here, man, I heard your house burn down. Let me pay for your gas and stuff like that. So, you know, it, you know, just not this benefit, but, it, you know, it showed me a lot that people, people still care. And that's what I always try to, you know, pattern myself after, you know, try to help people. You know, not necessarily, you know, to get something in return, but just to, you know, it's good to help people. So, like I said, I'm glad, I'm grateful, like, you know, for uh, EPW and, you know, wanting to do this. You know, they got together with Tony and they were going to do this. I'm going to shut down and, you know, work together and, and put this benefit on. So I can't, you know, I, I, I thank everybody, you know, and the ones that might not be able to be there, I, you know, people that just reached out to me. Yeah, that's good to hear, man. That's real, that's real good to hear. And, you know, um, another topic, you know, you being a promoter, um, OW, how, how many years has OWO been running now? Uh, it, ten, it'll be 10 years, uh, and May the, May the 15th will be 10 years exactly. 10 years, man, that's something else. So, mm -hmm. you know, as a promoter, tell us what it was like and what, it, you know, all that time during the pandemics that you couldn't run no wrestling because I remember – you ran a show there in, in Aberdeen where my friend Gene Jackson won the OWO title. And then mm -hmm. he went on to be the longest reigning OWO yeah. champion. He won't let none of us forget it. He reminds me every day. Mm -hmm. But, you know, he went on to be the longest running champion. But all that time, you couldn't run no wrestling. What was that like for you to, to have something that's been a part of your life for almost 10 years just taken away just like that? Yeah, with the pandemic and the thing about it is for the last, really for the last three or four years, I had – uh sort of slack down on running shows and I was, you know, maybe run about three or four a year. And so uh I sat down a little bit before the pandemic and I had because I was a lot of shows, a lot of 
possibility we were going to be running different places and stuff like that. So I sat down. I said, we're going to, you know, make a good run. I was going to maybe have a show, maybe every other month, start back like I was, I was doing when I, we first started OWO. And then the pandemic hit, and it's like, boom, that just kind of went through all that out the window. And so, it, it, you know, I just had to sit back and, and you know, the, we was able to do uh, New Year, kind of like a little throw-in show for free. I just kind of do that, you know, money out of my own pocket. You know, right. you know I, did, I did that show. And then, like I said, then other than that, um, we did, you know, the, the Aberdeen show was like really the last show we really did. And then we turned around last year was able to have the, you know, anniversary show. And Gene Jack, you know, that was the first show in a year and what, six months almost? I'm a year, five months. And, you know, however long Gene Jackson was champion. And we were able to have that show. And then we got kind of a, a little momentum going with the, uh, we had the uh, show at the fair. We did one show and then the next show got kind of canceled because people couldn't act right at the fair. Not, not the wrestlers, but the people yeah. in general. And so, you know, you know, it kind of threw a damper on what I wanted, you know, before the pandemic started. It kind of, like I said, we still had, you know, big, you know, I was looking forward to trying to give a good, you know, a good stretch run and run a show and stuff like that. And so, and, but, you know, uh, what, uh, what, you know, it kind of affected me a lot, you know, kind of, change my perspective but like i said i'm looking forward to you know like i said you know you know i kind of don't know what to do right now because i i kind of before you know my house burned down kind of was you know getting forward to maybe having some more shows and stuff like that because the pandemic has slowed down which now it seems like it's raging back up but anyway i, I was kind of looking forward to uh trying to get a couple more shows lined up and stuff get a good stretch run before the anniversary. It had to do a big 10-year 10, 10 anniversary. But then I'm a house burn, of course, all the OWO stuff, you know, not the ring, but, like, my belts didn't get burned, but they kind of got melted, so I have to, you know, do stuff now. My PA system, all that stuff, uh, all the stuff I had, you know, yeah. and for the wrestling, all that got burned. The only thing I, you know, pretty much got was the ring. So pretty much having to, you know, start over with that. So, that kind of put a damper in, you know, because, you know, people don't realize, you know, I was looking, looking at everything and, you know, it's going to cost a lot of money to get everything back, you know, the belts and even the PA system and, and stuff like that's going to cost, you know, it's going to take time to do. And like where when I first started over WO, I got the PA system kind of worked my way, and bought, you know, I had to buy everything at one time. Right. So. And, and you kind of got bigger bigger things on your plate right now than getting mm -hmm. the wrestling back going again. So, yeah. you know, it'll, just, it'll, it'll all come back around in time. And, you know, yeah. and when it does, Shane Mako is going to be there ready to take that heavyweight title off, mm -hmm. of, off of Brett Michaels. I can guarantee I'm tell you that, but we won't go, we won't go there today. We're, we're, we're going to mm -hmm. keep this light. Even though last week you was in the comments over there talking about Gene Jackson does a better podcast than me, which I appreciate that too much. But I mean, you know, yeah. I guess but, he does all right. Yeah, well, like I said, man, that's the thing. You know, Gene, you got two different types of people in Gene Jackson. You know, we, we me, the issue I always have with Gene Jackson is is the wrestling part of the podcast. Gene's got one of the best podcasts around, so it's gonna be. You know, I made a comment. And I said, I stick with it that he got a better podcast than you because Gene's a good. That's what that's what he does. And so I just made that comment. And like I said, I know Gene's a good friend of mine. I just believe the wrestling wise, and now that he's gone from over the air forever, don't have to worry about it. I just believe Gene's problem was he's lying to self with wrong people over the years and kind of influenced him on making wrong decisions, like being around Hollywood Jimmy and people like Izzy Rodden. And I don't think, you know, I think Gene just aligned to self with wrong people. But the podcast, Gene Jackson, I can, I enjoy, and I still enjoy him to this day. And so I mean, and you could say I was trying to throw, I wasn't really throwing shade at you, or even, you know, my thrash I was throwing shade, taking shots at him. I was just, I was just making the statement in general. Then Gene got a, one of the best podcasts around North Mississippi, and I just you know North Mississippi, you know Alabama, you know Tennessee area, and that just that just fat. And so, but if you up and coming, I'll give you a chance. I ain't gonna. I ain't gonna rule you out on your little podcast stuff, whatever. So, but you you ain't made a Gene Jackson level yet. So I'm 
just telling you that. Well, I mean, maybe, maybe, maybe one day I can. You know, I'm, I'm trying. Mm-hmm. People always, you know, people always tied me in with him. You know, that's, that's, that's just why I got frustrated. You bring up Gene Jackson because mm-hmm. you know all them damn EPW people try to say that I'm Gene Jackson, which is ridiculous. Which is absolutely really? ridiculous. If you watch EPW television right now, Hollywood Jimmy is in the process of proving to Neil Taylor that me and Gene Jackson are definitely two different people, which I mean, if you look, I mean, I got, I got long hair. I'm handsome. I, you know, Gene's a big know fat ball headed guy. I mean, yeah. we don't look nothing alike. We don't sound nothing alike. You know, I drank and smoke and cuss. He don't do, well, he cusses a little bit, but he don't drink. He don't dip and spit. And none of that stuff. Neither. Uh-huh. He don't like pills the way I do. But yet everybody wants to try to say we're the same person, which I find insulting. But, you know, I guess he does at least have pretty good podcasts. So there's that, if nothing else. Um, yeah. Like I said, I mean, I can see the similarities, but uh, like I said, yeah, it's just two different people. Like, you know, Gene's like a totally different person. You know, and you know, I don't really know you like that. But, you know, Gene, you know, just by looking at your podcast and looking at you on EPW uh, TV, you, you, you're not – you're not the Gene Jackson I know. I'm just going to, you know, so. No, I'm way better than him. I mean, I'm, no, well, I wouldn't take it that far. Either. EPW, I mean, I, they said the TV rating's been going through the roof since Whitey Jenkins been on EPW, me and the <laughs> Violent Gentlemen, you know, all of them. <laughs> Sanders, yeah. Morgan, Shane Mako. Shane Mako's going to be the biggest star in wrestling. He's going to be OWO champion. He's going to be EPW champion. Hell, he'll probably be WWE champion for it's all set. I won't take it that far now. If we're being but, honest. Who's gonna be? You think you think Shane Mako scared of Brock Lesnar or Roman Reigns's or anything? No, Shane Mako whoop all of them. I mean, I'm, I'm no glad you problem. got. I'm glad you got confidence in your boy. But I like Shane Mako. Uh, I like Shane Mako. I'll be honest. But you know, in in far as I like him, I think he could be a future EPW or a future OWO champion. You know, maybe I like his. You know, but. It, you know, some of the stuff I've seen on uh, the EPW TV, because, you know, I just kind of wondered if you kind of may hinder him from doing that, but that's just me personally. And I just believe he's got a good look and got a good, you know, repertoire. And I believe he can make, but now, as far as WWE, he got a long way for that, for sure. But I think he well, will make he, it. I mean, I wasn't there. But he whooped up on that Carlito. It used to be on WWE. He was Intercontinental mm-hmm. Champion. He's United States Champion. And if 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 the referee hadn't cheated, he would have whooped Carlito right there in Amory, Mississippi yeah. for OWO. And he told me to tell you that if you ever bring Carlito back, once OWO gets back going, you ever bring Carlito back, that he will whoop Carl. He'll slash that wig off his head and whoop him right there in front of everybody. First of all, that's not a wig. So get that out of your head. And second of all, that that I admit that was a good match, and he 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 just came up a little short. And like I said, Carl, he's a good athlete, and and that was a good match for him, and that was a good debut for uh Mako. And I believe that he, you know, that's why I said he got big things. I I believe he got a bright future in this business, and I believe you know, and I don't know if when or where or how, but I wouldn't mind seeing uh, you know. A, a part two of that match because, like I said, that first match, was, you know, I'll be honest, it was a good match. And like I said, he just fell short. And there's nothing, you know, you know there's nothing wrong with falling short. So, so uh, Carlito. Well, but I, I will keep that in mind, though. Thank you, you know. Like I said, me. I'm bringing him to the benefit and Smithville on the fifth. And you tell mm-hmm. Tony Dabbs or whoever's making Neil or whoever's making them matches, whoever they put across that ring from Shane Mako is going down. Best believe that. Yeah, I mean, uh, he's got a good chance, and uh, he's got a good look. And I like to, I don't, you know, uh, I don't control. I would say, you know, I got some good people that I like to see him wrestle, but you know, it, the benefit for me, so I can't, you know, I'm just, I'm sitting back and watching. But it, it would be good to see Mako versus the uh, likes of uh, Tony Dows or Brett Michaels, even though we don't seen that EPW, and against, you know, maybe the home like a Chris Styles or good, you know, add the rest of people like that, you know, even. You know, even uh, uh, Brian so fine. You know, even though he's a little funny, but that'd be a good matchup. You know, so I mean, whoever he goes again, I know it's gonna be a uh, no pun intended, a five star match. And so, you know, and whether he wins or not, that's a different story. I, I, I wouldn't, you know, say he's gonna lose and win, but I, I would like to see him 
I guess some of them guys. So we just have to see what they got lined up. Well, I mean, Brett Michaels might not even show up on the fifth because if you noticed, right about the time Shane Mako showed up at EPW, all of a sudden Brett Michaels ain't nowhere to be found. You don't see him no more because he don't want to get yeah. back in that ring with Shane Mako. So yeah, yeah, when he I hears Mako's going to be in Smithville, he might not even show up. But all yeah. the people you named, Tony Dabbs, Chris Styles, Brian Sofine, Mako whoop all them in a, in, a, in a handicap match, he'd beat all them. Yeah, I kind of, yeah, I kind of hear you now. He wouldn't do that now. I'll be realistic. But anyway, uh, yeah, I kind of hear you little comments. Y'all see the comments. Y'all stuck, you know, Brett Michaels still calling him gun show. Y'all been calling him no show, Brett Michaels. And <laughs> I see look, I seen the little comments and stuff like that. But you know, that's it might be, you know, but uh, I mean, that's what y'all want to call him. And that, but I think, you know, I think that will still be a good matchup. And you know, like I said, any of them guys, I, you know. It's a good, you know, there's a lot of people on that card I've seen that I would like to see him. You know, he's got a good look and everything like that. He's got a, you know, I think he he he, he would, if, as long as you stayed out of the way, we'll make a good old WO champion. And now, you know, I've been watching you on the EPW TV, you know, the TV, because I don't, I don't know if you do the regular shows or not, the you know, live shows, because I don't never be there. But I've seen. Liam Mako how, came, out, came to one of the live shows. And he wrestled mm. Daniel Nova, and people tried to say I interfered, but that ain't true. I was I was trying to – Daniel Nova was stuck on the ropes, and I was trying to get him off there with my cane, and then, mm. I don't know, something got crossed up. But one of them cheating referees made mm. a fast count, and that's why Mako lost to Daniel Nova, or else he'd have whooped Daniel Nova too. But we're going to get all that. We're going to get that referee fired, just like we're going to get Joey Gross fired too. And I mm. hope they ain't going to let Joey Gross announce at this show. Well, I, well, I, I, I have well, it removed. I, I, so, you know, I heard he was going to be there because I heard about seven announcers was going to be there. And so, but I heard he was one of them. So, I mean, you got any beef with him? He'll be there. You know, I, I heard. Tell you what, I tell you what, there is one good thing about that. All right. Now, you want to raise some money at this, at this benefit. Here's what you do. You let Gross Joey get on that microphone for about 10 minutes, and then you bring out a bucket, and you say, if we raise enough money right here in this bucket right now, we'll kick his fat butt out of here, and we won't let him do no more announcing. People will empty their damn wallets and pile that bucket full to get Gross Joey out of there. Guaranteed. Well, be a great I, well, I, I want to take it that far. Joey, I mean, I know y'all started this fire Joey crap, but Joey pretty much, he's well liked. I mean, he won the announcer of the year. APW, so I mean, he well liked, so it might. I, I believe we did a fire uh, White Jenkins deal. We might, we might raise more money on don't that. You, uh, hey, don't you start nothing like that. Don't even, but, don't even talk like you know, that. So I, I'm just saying, I mean, EPW would fold like a tent if they got rid of White Jenkins. Really? They'd have to shut yeah. it down within a couple of weeks if I wasn't there. The fans yeah, would riot. They would, they yeah. would tear the place down if I wasn't yeah, there. They would be celebrating. EPW been gone on almost 15 years when Lawrence Show in Mississippi, and they. And they probably celebrate you being gone because you you have kind of tried to influence matches. You kind of, you know, do, you know, just like Jimmy, Hollywood Jimmy Blake, like y'all kind of need to learn to know y'all place in the wrestling business. And that's not trying that's to. That's at the top. Cheat. Our place is at the top of the wrestling business. No, it's not. Right. Hollywood Jimmy is a good, close, personal friend of mine. Now, don't you get on here disparaging the good name of Hollywood no, Jimmy Blake. No, I, 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 I get yeah, Because, like I said, that, and that's one thing I said, you know, I said, yeah, I I wonder why Hollywood Jimmy gonna be at my benefit, but I appreciate him coming. But I I don't want this crap when he he want to cheat or and do all this use a chain and and a cane and all. We not, I don't want to have all that Michelle. And that's the same thing I'm gonna tell you. You know, you got a good wrestler. You got some good guys that can wrestle. You know, they don't need you to help them win a match. So. Hey, at EPWs, I'm always at the commentary table giving expert analysis on the show. Mm -hmm. How can I interfere if I was over there doing commentary? Uh, you, because you walk down. Right. I, I've seen you. And so, like I said, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to, you know, I'm looking forward and I, I just hope you stick your, don't stick your nose in his business. Let the man wrestle his match. Let the man win on his own. All I you do dream is, of it. I would uh, never dream of interfering. I'm just going to come out there. If he needs a little advice, he can roll out of the ring, and I'll give him some advice on how he can win the match fair and square without cheating or doing anything wrong. And I'm just there to make an appearance so all the fans will show up and raise good money for your benefit. If they want to, 
I don't usually associate with wrestling fans because they're kind of low class, if I'm being honest. Okay. I mean, just honestly. But well, you just for you, winning. Dirty, because I like you, I'm going to mm-hmm. I'll be willing to take pictures with fans. I, I've autographs for $20. I'll sign something for you for 20 bucks. And all the money will go to dirty. So well, I mean, I probably get one. Man. <laughs> Just don't touch, don't let nobody touch me. Mm, I mean, I they mean, can stand as long as they stand a safe distance away. I'll take a picture with them. I'll sign an autograph for them, and that way they can say they met a big time television superstar. Like I said, I'm the star of EPW TV every every time I'm on there. Okay, hey, man, I don't know what world you're living in. Every, and I mean, Gene Jackson, if he told me he would have well. came to you benefit, but since y'all y'all banned him from all the shows, he can't come. So he he, he ain't going to be able to be there. Well, like I said, I mean, it's technically, technically ain't an OWO show. Yeah. So, he, I mean, I would like to see Gene Jackson, and I, I would like to even have him do something with you and make sure, you know, but Gene is kind of, uh, he kind of don't, he got his own way of thinking, so he probably wouldn't listen to me. I tell him to get a hold of you or something like that and he try to interfere, but so uh, he probably won't go for it. But I like I said, if Gene wants to come the benefit, I'll be, you know, I'll reach him because technically it's not a OWO show. So he's you know, he's more than welcome to come back. You know, come Gene from a big Jackson bitch, I, claims I owe him money for a truck I bought off of him like four years ago. And every time we're in the same place, he's always trying to track me down, trying to get this money he claims I owe him. So I kind of steer clear of him. So, I mean, if he comes, keep him away from me. Because if he comes and wants to talk about money, we're going to fist the cuffs right there at the benefits. Mm-hmm. Okay. But I, I, you know, you know, I, mean, I, I, if I may reach out to Gene and see if he wants to come. If he wants to come, like I said, it, you know, I'll I, you know, I, I be glad. I ain't seen Gene in over a year, you know, since, you know, since he let, you know, almost a year now. So, but. Technically, he, you know, but you know how since wrestling. Y'all, since y'all stole the title from him over there at Amory, the Amory no. job is what he told me it was. He said yeah. it was terrible. He said y'all cheated him. He was injured. He said he had his neck in a neck brace. He could barely walk. Could barely stand. Didn't know his name. He was. He had a hundred and four degree temperature. He had spinal stenosis and all this. And y'all, y'all forced him in the ring with old Brett Michaels and stole his belt off of him. Well, That's what yeah, he said. That, he was the one to volunteer because he went, didn't have to defend the title until the next show. But he the one to see Brett. He thought Brett Michael was hurt. And so he said, well, if I can defend it now, I won't have to defend the next show, which is little did he know. Even if he had a war against Brett Michael, I was going to make him defend that next OWO show anyway. But anyway, he wanted to defend that. He the one to come up with that concept. And then he lost his match. And then he won't be mad because it's like, oh, I got rid of No, you got rid of yourself. You know, that's why I'm telling you, it was. Gene, I like him. I just think he's influenced. He gets influenced by wrong decisions by by the people. But, but well, I mean, he, I hate he's, it. I like me, he's been checking his mail every day, expecting you to send that belt back to him. But I guess now, since back. he got and since he got destroyed in the fire, I guess he can quit checking the mailboxes. Ain't gonna be no. Yeah, problem. yeah. I, I mean, I still got the, uh, the plates. <laughs> I sent one of part of the plate. <laughs> plate, he went, you know. Look here, Mac Wallace so, says Brett Michaels is an underwear model, not a wrestler. I mean, so but, but yeah, uh, I don't know about that, but he he he's good. He's a heck of a wrestler. Like, you know, I mean, despite y'all calling him no show, Brett Michaels, he, he's gun, he's gun. They call him gun show for a reason. Well, I heard, I heard they wanted they wanted all the violent gentlemen on Memphis TV, and Brett Michaels threatened to quit if 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 we came up there. Because, uh, well, I want because to Brett Michaels don't want the violent gentleman on TV because he don't want to get embarrassed and get get, get whooped on the Memphis TV. And Dustin mm. Starr don't want me up there because his old lady likes Whitey Jenkins and then she'd probably try to go home with me or something. Yeah, well, yeah, well, I wouldn't take it that far. I mean, I mean, I don't, that's just what I was told. I never met the lady. I mean, I don't yeah, know. I mean, I mean, I'm they, pretty sure. They have that effect on, on the women's. Oh, you know? I mean, I'm pretty sure. And I ain't with the funny stuff like I'm not like a uh, Brian so fine, uh, but I'm not with the funny stuff. But I'm pretty sure going from Dustin to, to you will be a major downgrade for her. So I, I just don't see that. But anyway, well, I mean, 
Don't go bringing your personal feelings for Dustin mm-hmm. into this. I mean, oh, wow. look at Wallace backs me up. He says, that's what the star kid told me. So there you go. Matt Wallace. Mm-hmm. Matt Wallace ain't never told a lie in his life. <laughs> oh, He's been yeah. running a long damn time, by the way. I mean, it's quite – and see right here, Mac said she had an eye for old Mackie too. So see, I mean, I can't bring Mac oh. if I ever make it up there. I might just bust in on them. I might just show up up there at Memphis sometime, bring the violent gentlemen. We just bust in the door, just whoop all the wrestlers up. There ain't nobody up there that can take take on the violent gentlemen. None of them. Yeah, well, judging by the EPW taping I seen, and you know, you got y'all got hand handed to you one show, and then I well, we got cheated there. on the one show, but on the other show. In the six-man tag, the violent gentleman beat Memphis Muscleheads and Steven Styles in a six-man mm-hmm. tag. How, how they do That's that? That's all I'm gonna say because I, I can't remember if the others aired or not. But they won. Uh, well, how they, the but I, I remember that. But how they do that? It was some blatant cheating. But if you if you remember if you remember correctly, and I know you wasn't there, but if you remember the, the last you know the OWO show that the violent gentleman got handed to him just by Brett Michaels by himself. But, well, uh, I, Jackson told me that Brett Michaels was all in a roid rage or something, and it was it, it was a lot of cheating and crooked referees. Because I mean, you know, y'all got that Mike Thrasher. He was on her last week. Everybody knows you can't trust him. He's a he's a cheater from way back. So, but one more time, let's hit it in here. So we got Saturday, February the fifth, Smithville, Mississippi, at the school gym. And if you're a wrestler and you want to be on the show or you want to help out, contact Tony Dabs on the Facebooks there. And he will get back with you and let you know uh, what you can do and when you can do it and if you can do it. And then another big announcement we got here. Look at this, Dirty. Hold on. Next next Wednesday, right here on the Whitey Jenkins Show, my guest is going to be Vegas oh. Joe. Look at there. Oh, no. Vegas Joe's going to be on here. He's going to be talking about – he's going to be coming up at the EPW Comic Con on the 29th of January, which Whitey Jenkins will be there too. He's going to talk about coming back to Memphis Wrestling the 30th of January. And see, I'm going to talk to old Vegas Joe, see if he can't sneak me in up there. See, no. me and him – me and him hook up. He's going to teach me. He's going to tell me how to get me a zoo. I'm going to make me some money over here in Alabama. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get me a couple of them tigers. I'm going to get me a couple of them buffaloes from that buffalo park over in Tupelo if I can get them in the back of my truck. I'm going to make some money. Old Vegas and, Joe uh, going to tell me how to get it done, see? No, but Vegas Joe, I met him at Tupelo last year. He's a pretty good guy. I don't think uh, I don't think he's like he, – he's not like you. Oh, me and him hit it off good. Oh, what are you talking about? He don't, he don't like me. Vegas Joe's gonna love me. We two of a kind, man. He's gonna help. He's gonna hook me up with how to get the zoo going over here. Look at what Charles Anders said. I saw Carlito and Brett were juicing before the show. That's how they. That's how they stole the title from Gene Jackson and beat the Violent Gentleman. They was all juiced up on them steroids and all that. Yeah, first of all, they not I'm Carlito definitely not steroids, and I've been no Brett Michaels. 15 years and he's not on steroids. Dirty. I mean, I don't, he's not. Dirty. He, don't, he, don't come on my show telling stories now. Uh, I'm just saying, y'all. You don't think Carlito ever. No, he, yeah, he, you know, Carlito, uh, and, and I would think he'd be a little bit, you you know, and Brett Michael's definitely not on steroids. I don't know, you know, y'all been listening to the <laughs> play like too much. Dirty, yeah, I thought you went to church, man. How are you going to come right, on my show y'all been until. Listening. Y'all been listening to Jimmy Blaylock too much. He needs to be on steroids. Maybe he'll maybe he'll get in some kind of shape. And I don't know where y'all start that with Brett Michaels and Carlito. Definitely not on steroids. He's a he's a good Christian man too. So you know, and so they, no, that's not true. Yeah, you know, but Dirty, this yeah. ain't this ain't helping matters here. You come on here telling all these stories here right at the end of the show. I'm trying I'm trying to get people to come out and help us do this benefit, and you just gonna hear just outright lying in front of everybody. No, my, yeah, no. my I got to I got right. to put perspective in this show. And I gotta put perspective in this show. I can't you know, you y'all going to left field with it and, and it's not I you know they you know, they're not you know, that's not true. Especially at my show. They wouldn't do it at my show. And I've been like, yeah. Well, Mac 
do I do steroids? Yeah, I've been doing steroids. I mean, do you do steroids because you got jacked up too? You got, yeah, you I've been I've been doing steroids my whole. Yeah, yeah, I've been doing steroids my whole life. Yeah, mm -hmm, sure have. Yep, you and that, you and damn Curly Mo, <laughs> y'all stay all juiced <laughs> up on them roids. Yeah, no, he, he stays off from hamburgers. <laughs> no triple, triple trees burgers. That's that's him. But uh, you said that's him. But anyway, it, I ain't talking about my brother. That's your brother but talking yeah, there, yeah. Curly. That ain't me. I ain't said nothing about you. But he don't. He, he don't. He don't die. He don't die. He just. He, he's on to die. Now, I, that might be a good matchup, Mako versus Curly Moe. Speaking of, because he's on to die right now. He's on. A, he's on a no meat diet for I think twenty one days. So he's gonna be in pretty good shape. Come to uh, benefit too. So he's on to die right now. Oh, he's gonna be. So weak. he's on. A, if he goes twenty one days with no meat. Mako will just beat him like he stole something. You don't. You can't go twenty one mm -hmm. days with no meat and think you're gonna compete with Shane Mako. Give me a break. Mm -hmm. Well, we in the overtime, Dirty. Hey, we got to wrap this thing up. So, appreciate you coming on the show. I look forward to seeing you there in Smithville on Saturday the 5th. And like I said, I'll be there. If people want a picture, autograph from Whitey Jenkins, $20, $25 a piece, I'll raise you a bunch of money. But I'm telling you, you tell Tony oh. Dabbs, I said this, if y'all want to make some money on this benefit, all y'all got to do is say, if y'all fill this bucket full of cash, we'll throw Gross Joey right out that front door, and y'all won't have to listen to him talk over his matches. And I promise you folks will be, they'll be going and pawning stuff to put money in that vein to get him out of there. Guaranteed. Plus, if you, if you make him pay at the concession stand, Gross Joey will put down some groceries, too, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you ain't just lying make about sure that. He, just make sure he eats out the concession stand out of business before y'all take the offering to kick him out. Okay, that's why I'm a pro <laughs> okay. promoter. I'm dirty. I've been promoting outlaw wrestling shows for 25 years. I'll tell you. I know you've been doing OWO for 10, and you've done pretty well. You stick with Whitey. I'll tell you how to really, really, really screw some. I mean, uh, make some money and 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 be profitable. You know, okay. I, I think I, I, I think to say screw right. people over. That ain't that ain't what I'm about. But anyway, well, well, well. all right. Well, you take care. We're gonna wrap this thing up because we're supposed to go 30 minutes, and right now we're 38 minutes. So, mm. our okay. okay well, I, will, I, I look forward to seeing you, man, on, on, on the, at the benefit. So, all right. Take care of yourself. Okay. There he is, old dirty. He's a good guy. I mean, he, you know, he. he he going to sit here and say that Brett Michaels and Carlito ain't never done no steroids. Give me, oh, come on now. Come on. Anyway, let's, 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 let's promote some things real quick before we go. Coming up this weekend, January 14th and 15th, you can come see me at the Happy Hour Comedy Club in Anniston, Alabama. I'll be performing Friday night and Saturday night. If you can't make it the next weekend, I'll be back there on Friday and Saturday night, 21st and 22nd. So, Come see me do some stand-up comedy. If you can't do that, if you're over in Mississippi like Dirty is, well, come see me January 29th at the Corinth Comic Con. I'll be wandering around there meeting folks and taking pictures and signing and stuff, whether you want me to or not. February 19th, I'm at the EPW Arena. And just like we've been talking about this whole show, February 5th, Smithville, Mississippi. Come see Whitey Jenkins and then tune in next week on Wednesday, 6 p.m. Next Wednesday, Vegas Joe's going to be here. That ought to be a lot of fun. Like I said, I'm going to get inside his head, find out how to get me a zoo started, and we're going to talk about where all he's going to be. should be fun. So anyway, thank you all for watching, and we'll see you next time.